So let's get into talking about how to find your niche in web design and web development. And there's three things that you need to do in order to do this. And it's all kind of centered around what I think is the single biggest mistake that web designers and web developers make that causes them to fail to be successful. And so this came up here for me recently based off of a comment that I got over on YouTube. And the comment says, I have trouble with getting a job. I know many web technologies, but I'm not an expert in any of them. I can't get enough experience in one technology just by learning by myself. And that right there, right there, is the single biggest mistake that most web developers make. They go into it thinking that width is better than depth, that knowing how to do a bunch of stuff is better than knowing how to do one thing or one set of one small set of things really, really well. And in my experience, and I think, frankly, a lot of people out there, it's simply not the case. The way to really be successful, and by successful, what I, I'm not saying you can't get a job doing that. Right? I'm inevitably going to have somebody who comments on this and says, you know, well, you know, the, look at this job or look at that job. And the only way you're going to get... I get that. I'm not saying you can't get a job doing that. But chances are you're going to make less money and you're going to be miserable. That's the point. For me, success isn't about how much money you make. Maybe that's part of it. But it's, am I doing something where I'm not just completely miserable? What's the point of getting into web development and doing this if you're just going to be as miserable as I was working on the factory floor, screwing in three screws every single day for eight hours a day? What's the point? You might as well save your time and energy and just go screw in the three screws. You can learn that a heck of a lot faster. Oh, you betcha, yeah. So success to me is about enjoying what you're doing and also then making good money doing it, working on things that matter, working with people that you like working with, and so forth. But again, this is the biggest mistake is learning a whole bunch of different things instead of learning one thing really, really well. So I responded to this comment over on YouTube and I said, very simply, change that become an expert in one. And his response was, well, it's not easy to become an expert in one because I need to get experience first. I can learn many things by myself, but not everything. Last time I got three days to learn and make modules in Magento. I didn't get the job. Previously, it's the same situations with Laravel. They think I can be an expert in this in, in a few days. Now, okay, we have to parse this out because... You know, if you're going to a job interview and they say, hey, do this thing in, in Magento and you know nothing about Magento and you got to try and figure it out in three days. Yeah, that's probably going to be a problem. Why did you apply for that job in the first place? No, 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 no. That's what I would ask. Same thing with Laravel. If you don't know it, why would you apply for that job? So picking the right niche. That's, that's the strategy. That's how you alleviate all this. And so, you know, what I told him, I'll tell you is stop doing that. Stop learning, trying to learn a bunch of different things. Focus in on a, a more narrow set of skills and get all your experience in that. Get, start building your, your job history, your portfolio, any open source projects that you work on, etc. related to that particular niche and then the jobs you apply to let them be in that where you already know it and so again i've said this for a lot of years and what the the question i get a lot is well how do i do that the first thing that you need to identify is what you're good at as an example oh and this one time at band camp when i when i first got into coding one of the things that i went into quickly uh quickly to was wordpress and I was fascinated by kind of the user aspect of it and, the com and, and building communities. This was at the time when, uh, you know, Facebook was just starting. MySpace was still a, kind of a big thing. There was a lot of these kind of social networks going on out there. And they were also just kind of starting up. And so I was kind of fascinated by that part of things. And so this was before Buddy Press and, and, and all that. So I started looking into it. And 
one of the things that I did is I built a plugin that added some community elements to a WordPress site. And when in doing that, I really dove into the kind of user related functions inside of WordPress. And I got really, really good at it. And I ultimately ended up getting the client that I, I'm still with today that is my main client. I ended up getting them because of that, in, in large part because of that WordPress plugin, because they were in the memberships uh, side of, of WordPress. They were interested in those kind of community things and they were, they, were intrigued by what I had done. They thought it could bring something to what they were doing. And so it was me focusing on that one really specific, almost kind of obscure thing that allowed me to have success and, and to be able to land a client that I still have to this day. So again, you, you want to focus on what are your strengths? What can you code without thinking? What are you naturally interested in or passionate about? You need to figure out what your strengths are, and what you're good at. That's the first thing. The second thing then is what do I enjoy? So again, as an example, when I started learning web development, I got frustrated by a combination of things that uh, I felt held me and other web developers back as I was kind of going through the process of learning how to code. And, you know, one of those things was kind of all the know-it-alls that you find on the web. I mean, you could look at you can look at, you've probably seen it in forums and stuff, but you could just look at any video I do. You will find someone on there who is the classic definition commenting of a know-it-all. So that really frustrated me that you had people that were, they were really unhelpful. They were more concerned about making themselves look smart than they were about anything else. And it's it just generally uh, crappy, not nice people to be around. So there was that. There was a lack of marketing knowledge among developers. A lot of developers struggle with the selling themselves part of thing in this this kind of uh, myth or <laughs> the stigma among web developers of doing anything so remotely salesy. Uh, that, that was something that really bothered me coming from the background that I had and understanding just how important that was no matter what you do. And then uh, what I would call uh, debilitating sort of inner game issues that many developers deal with. So uh, a lack of confidence, uh, the, again, the propensity towards being know-it-alls, uh, you know, just sometimes being really difficult to work with and flaky and just not wanting to, to be someone that's hard to kind of hard to deal with, uh, not not great interpersonal skills and so forth. So I saw all of these things, both again, in myself and then other people that I was interacting with. And what I found as I was kind of going through all this is that when I would sit down to talk about these things, I could talk for hours and hours and hours about it. And it never felt like work for me. And so that was a big reason why I started this podcast right here. And I've been doing this for years now have, you know, close to 150 episodes that I've done, and it still doesn't feel like work to me. And so again, you have to think about what do you enjoy? What is it that you can just sit and do for long periods of time? And it never feels like work because the the work that you do has to be something that you ultimately enjoy. Otherwise, you're never going to put in the work to be really, really good at it to be the best in the world at it or to strive to be the best in the world about uh, uh, with it because it's just not something that you really care about or you enjoy. The last one then is you have to think about what makes money. So again, as an example, when I decided to go into uh, building membership sites, the whole idea of membership sites at that time had become kind of in vogue among uh, among online marketers. And so, and a lot of them were attracted to this notion of recurring income. And it was just this big thing that a lot of the kind of gurus at the time and stuff were talking about. And so I knew it was a hot topic. I knew it was something that was generating a lot of interest. And I knew that there are going to be people that were looking to do this. And I also knew that while there was a lot of information out there about the how to make money with membership sites, like the marketing and business side of it. And that niche was pretty saturated with some really kind of heavy hitters in online marketing. 
there weren't too many developers out there who were focused solely on solely on just building membership sites. Now there were developers out there who could build websites and and knew that stuff, but there was really not a lot of people out there who were saying, "Look, this is what I do. I'm a specialist in this particular area." And so a lot of the clients that were hiring people to to to, to build membership sites were hiring developers who were kind of generic developers. They they kind of knew that stuff, but they 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 were kind of a jack of all trades type person. And they were running into a lot of problems. I mean, that's that's what led to me getting hired at Inc. Inc. magazine. Uh the guy who ultimately came to to me to to do that, he had worked with other developers. He'd been trying to get his membership site built for almost 2 years. He'd been through a number of other developers and ran into a lot of problems and just couldn't get done what he needed to get done. And I got it done for him in about a month. I knew that I had something unique to bring to the table. So those are the three things. Again, what am I good at? What do I enjoy? And what can I make money at? If you go through those things, look, it takes some thought. None none of this is going to be handed to you. Well, I get a lot of people who will just tell me, They'll say, just tell me what niche I should go into. No, I can't tell you what niche to go into. This takes some thought. It takes some work. You have to figure it out on your own. But when you do, you'll know. And you'll chances are you're going to have a lot more success. And you're going to stop making the mistake that so many people... A lot of people tried to be a Bo Jackson. Right? Bo Jackson was really good at football. He was really good at baseball. But if you look over kind of sports history, those people are really, really rare. You have Bo Jackson, you have Deion Sanders. There's maybe a couple of others that have kind of been two sport athletes at a professional level, at a really high level like that. But it's really pretty rare. But if you look at a guy like Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan was terrible at baseball. But he was considered maybe the best basketball player ever. So you might not be able to be a Bo Jackson. But you can be a Michael Jordan. You can be a Tom Brady. Right? You can be someone who's really, really good at this one specific thing and makes your living killing that particular niche. And that's what this is all about. And it makes your life so much easier when you embrace that and accept that and understand that. You know, one of the big mistakes that I see a lot of developers make is they make learning how to code much harder than it has to be. For example, I see a lot of developers who think the list of skills that they need to learn to master PHP is pages and pages and pages long. (laughs) It's not. Now, I've said this before, and I will definitely say it again, but there's a foundational set of skills that you need to learn in order to be functional as a PHP developer, meaning that you can execute on projects and get paid. This is the fallacy that is so prevalent in the PHP developer community, that there's this ideal set of skills that you have to learn and that you have to be the absolute greatest developer in the history of mankind in order to be able to get paid to code. You don't. You simply need to be able to execute on projects. I talk about end results all the time. You need to be able to deliver end results to clients because that's ultimately what they want. But when you focus on these found foundational skills and learning only those first, the things that will allow you to execute on projects, what you realize is that you can start getting paid to code much faster than you probably ever thought because you haven't set this idealistic, unattainable bar for yourself to reach before you allow yourself to take paid work. You can start now when you can execute on a deliverable, when you can complete a a single project, when you can create a contact form or a business website. When you can execute on that, you can start. And you could start then building the life that you wanted that you got into this all for the f- in the first place. Instead of continuing to slave away at some job making somebody else rich. Anyway, you can learn these skills 
in my free course, The Beginner's Guide to PHP, which you can enroll in at johnmorrisonline.com slash learn PHP. And it's going to teach you these foundational skills so you can get started right now. Again, it's a completely free course that you can take at johnmorrisonline.com slash learn PHP. Don't wait on this. Head over there right now and get started building that life.